Hello everyone, welcome to my lecture. Today in this lecture, we will discuss about iteration. First, in this iteration, we will discuss about multiple assignment. As you may have discovered, it is legal to make more than one assignment to the same variable. A new assignment makes an existing variable refer to a new value. This is look like this, Bruce equal 5, print Bruce, Bruce 7, print Bruce. The output of this program is 5 and 7. Because the first time Bruce is printed, his value is 5 and the second time his value is 7. The comma at the end of the first print statement suppresses the new line after the output, which is why both outputs appear on the same line. Here is what multiple assignment looks like in a state diagram. This is look like this. With multiple assignment, it is especially important to distinguish between an assignment operation and statement of equality because Python use the equal sign for assignment. It is tempting to interpret a statement like A equal B as a statement of equality. It is not. First, equality is communicative and assignment is not. For example, in mathematics, if a equals 7, then 7 equals a. But in Python, the statement a equals 7 is legal and 7 equals a is not. Furthermore, in mathematics, a statement of equality is always true. If a equals b now, then a will always equal b. In Python, an assignment statement can make two variables equal, but they don't have to stay what this way. This is look like this. Although multiple assignment is frequently helpful, in this example, the third line changes the value of A but does not change the value of B, so they are no longer equal. In some programming languages, a different symbol is used for assignment such as the smaller and hyphen or colon equal comma to avoid confusion. Although multiple assignment is frequently helpful, you should use it with caution. If the values of variables change frequently, it can make the code difficult to read and debug. Now we will discuss about the why statement. Computers are often used to automate repetitive tasks. Repeating identical or similar tasks without making errors is something that computers do well and people do poorly. We have seen two programs and first one is n lines and countdown that use recursion to perform repetition which is also called iteration because iteration is so common from repetition. Python provides several language features to make it easier. The first feature we are going to look at it is while statement. Here is what countdown looks like with a while statement. This is look like this. Since we removed the recursive call, the function is not recursive. You can almost read the while, st while statement as if it were English. It means while n is greater than 0, continue displaying the value of n and then reducing the value of n by 1. When you get to 0, display the wall plus stop. More formally, there is the flow of execution for a while statement. First one, evaluate the condition yielding 0 or 1. If the condition is false, 0, exit the while statement and continue execution at the next statement. If the condition is true, 1, execute each of the statements in the body and then go back to step 1. The body consists of all of the statements below the header and the same indication. This type of flow is called a loop because the third step loop back around to the top. Notice that if the condition is false the first time through to the loop. The statements inside the loop are never executed. The body of the loop should change the value of one or more variables so that 
eventually the condition becomes false and the loop terminates otherwise the loop will repeat forever which is called an infinity loop an endless source of assumption of a computer scientist or a for a computer scientist is the observation that the direction on shampoo leather rinse repeat are an infinity loop in the case of countdown we can prove that the loop terminates because we know that the value n is finite and we can see that the value of n gets smaller each time through the loop so eventually we have to get to zero in other cases it is not so easy to tell and there is an example this is the one the condition for this loop is n equal 1 this is that so the loop will continue until n is 1 which will make the condition false each time so the loop the program outputs the value for n and then checks whatever it is even or odd if it is even the value of n is divided by 2 if it is odd the value is replaced by n into 3 plus 1 for example if the starting value the argument passed to sequence is 3 the resulting sequence is 3 10 5 16 8 4 2 since n sometimes increases the sometimes it decreases there is no obvious proof that n will never reach 1 or that the program terminates for some particular values of n we can prove termination for example if the starting value is a power of 2 then the value of n will be even each time through the loop until it reaches once The previous example ends with such a sequence starting with 16. Particularly values as side the interesting question is whatever we can prove that this program terminates for all value of n. So far no one has been able to prove it or disprove it. There is an exercise in the corner of this slide. if you can this will be helpful now we will discuss about tables one of the things loops are good for is generating tabular data before computers are reading readily available people had to calculate logarithms sines and cosines and other mathematical functions by hand to make that easier mathematicians books contained long table listing the values of these functions creating the tables was slow and boring and they tended to be full of errors when computers appeared on the sense one of the initial reaction was this is great we can use the computers to generate the tables so there will be no errors that turn out to be the true mostly but short short english so there after computers and calculator are so pervasive that the tables become obsolete well almost for some operation computer use tables of values to get an approximate answer and then perform computations to improve the approximation in some cases there have been errors in the underlying tables most famously in the table the intel pentium used to perform floating point divisions although a log table is not as useful as it once was it still makes a good example of iteration the following program outputs a sequence of values in this left column and their logarithms in the right columns this what is looks like that the strings slash t the strings look like this represents a tab character as characters and strings are displayed on the screen in an invisible marker called the cursor keeps track of where the next character will go after a print statement the cursor normally goes to the beginning of the next line the tab character shifts the cursor to the line until it reaches one of the tab stops Tabs are useful for making columns for next line, as in 
the output of the previous program there is an example this is look like this if uh, this values seem odd remember that the log function use base e since powers of 2 are so important in computer science we often want to find logarithms with respect to base 2 to do that we can use this following formula log 2x equal log ex by log e2 changing the output statements to print x this is that and else there is the another logs is that we can see that 1 2 4 and 8 are powers of 2 because their logarithms base are 2 are round numbers if we wanted to find the logarithm logarithms of other powers of 2 we could modify the program like this one now instead of adding something to x each time through the loop with else and arithmetic sequence we multiply x by something yielding a zero sequence the result must be look like this because of the tab characters between the columns the position of the second column does not depend on the number of digits in the first column logarithm tables may not be useful anymore but for computer scientists knowing the power of 2 is and there is an exercise uh, you want to do modify this program so that it outputs the powers of 2 up to 65,536 that's 2 to the power 6 tenths print it out and memorize it an escape sequence it can appear anywhere in a string in the example the tab escape sequence is the only things in the strings how do you think you represent a backslash in a string this is for you as an exercise write a single string that produces this output thank you everyone for being with me hello everyone how are you today we will discuss about two dimensional tables encapsulation and generalization and more encapsulation in my previous lecture i have discussed multiple statement while statement and tables now we will discuss about two dimensional tables a two dimensional table is a table where you read the value at the intersection of a row and a column a multiplication table is a good example let's say you want to print a multiplication table for the values from 1 to 60 or 1 to 6 a good way to start is to write a loop that prints the multiplies of 2 all on one line that look like this one the first line initializes a variable named i which acts as a counter or loop variable as a loop executes the value of i increases from 1 to 6 when i is 7 the loop terminates each time through the loop it displa displays the value of 2 into i followed by three spaces again the comma in the print statement supposes the new line after the loop completes the second print statement starts a new line the output of the program is 2 4 6 8 10 and 12 and now we will discuss about encapsulation and generalization encapsulation is the process of wrapping a piece of code in a function allowing you to take advantage of all the things functions are good for you have seen two example of encapsulation in my previous lectures generalizations mean taking something specific such as printing the multiplies of two and making it more general such as printing the multiplies of any integer this function con encapsulates the previous loop and generalize it to print multiplies of n and 
this edge look like this one to encapsulate all we had to do was add the first line which declares the name of the function and the parameter list to generalize all we had to do was replace the value to which the parameter n if we call the function on which argument 2 we get the same output as before with the argument 3 the output is 3 6 9 12 15 18 with the argument 4 the output is 4 8 12 16 20 and 24 by now you can probably guess how to print a multiplication table by calling print multiplies repeatedly with different arguments in fact we can use another loop this is loop like this one notice how similar this loop is to the one inside print multiplies all we did was replace the print statement with a function call the output of the program is a multiplication table this is look like this and now we will discuss about more encapsulation the demonstrate encapsulation again let's take the code from the end of the first slide and wrap it up in a function the code is was this this process is a common development plan we develop code by writing lines of code outside any function or typing them into the interpreter when we get the code working we extract it and wrap it up in a function this development plan is particularly useful if you don't know when you start writing how to divide the program metho function program into functions this approach lets you design as you go along thank you everyone for being with me see you in the next lecture